Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. This is Dawn at Affordable Desert Living. Well folks, today is really fun for me. I get to share with you folks my newest project and it's one I've wanted to do for so, so long. Um, this will be my third year here and I've been keeping all of my tools and even the place I shower in is in a tent shed basically. So I am at a point where I need to do something more serious. So I'm going to build a 12 foot by 16 foot wooden structure for a shed. I'm going to call it the shower shed. So I haven't mastered SketchUp or AutoCAD or any kind of fancy engineering program. I just basically use Photoshop and it has a grid view. So for every square in the grid in Photoshop, I count that as one square foot. So that's how I uh, design things. Um, a little archaic, but hopefully it's going to work okay for this building. So of course the very first thing I need to do is clear a section of my property here where that building can set. Those things are tough. Timber! Or something like that. This reminds me of a 1970s television series I used to watch years ago. Well, I didn't watch it much. It was called Fame. Does anyone remember it? Anyway, it was about these dancers in New York that had to work really hard and hopefully achieve their dreams of becoming a dancer. And I remember the opening line to that TV program. It was something like, you got big dreams. Right here is where you start paying. Then the lead actress, Debbie Allen, puts everybody through their paces. And those kids are working up a super sweat on the dance floor. And I was thinking I could make a spin-off television program called Off Grid for seniors. And it would go something like uh, this. You got big dreams of going off grid. Well, dreams cost, and right here is where you start paying. Of course, then I break into a dance with music and everything, and it's really fun to watch. Uh, maybe not. I think Cat Claw is really well named. <laughs> definitely like the claws of a cat and definitely could be painful to run into. The good thing is I got my massage therapist on speed dial.
So as you can see, folks, this isn't all leveled and raked perfectly, and that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an earth floor at this point. That means I'm going to have to bring in a lot of dirt and put it in this area here and pack it down really good. And you'll see as we go along how I'm doing all this. But one of the things I want to do now here is establish where the corner post is going to be for this uh, shower shed. And I'm picking what I think is uh, probably the lowest corner because from there I'll just build the dirt up. And hopefully you'll see what I mean a bit later. But let's get that staked. I'm anxious to get going. This is making great progress. So since this is going to be a 12 by 16 foot building, um, I'm measuring it out and I'm using my handy uh, uh, tape here. So what I've done is tapped a little nail in here and now uh, right in the center of the stake. So I'll run it over to the other end and then at the uh, 16 foot mark, then I'll tap in another nail on the top of another stake. So figuring out a perfect rectangle, 12 by 16, was definitely a challenge. And for someone like me who has no mathematical mind at all, it's super challenging. So fortunately for me online, I found this cool calculator tool where you just punch in the number of inches of the uh, building, as in the dimensions of it, and then it'll give you the diagonal measurements of the entire building. In this case, it was 240 inches or 20 feet. So the cool thing is, once you know that the measurements from corner to corner, corner to corner of your building are the same, that means you have a perfect rectangle and that also means that the basis for your entire construction is going to be accurate. And that's important. So then the trick was to put stakes where the corners would be and make those diagonal measurements as perfect as I could. Wow, what a challenge. So I probably should have had a better measuring tool than this surveyor uh, tape. But what I did is um, I took a measurement, which I knew was going to be 20 feet exactly from this, from this post here. I ran it all the way over here. Then, because I knew my building was supposed to be uh, 12 feet wide, but it got really tricky pounding all those stakes in and repounding them in because just the natural mathematics of a shape like this means it's not going to be easy to actually um, create a perfect rectangle in a field situation like this. So to make this a lot easier folks, I just simply used tent pegs like this guy. So now I could take the tent pegs, easily move them a few inches back and forth just to fine tune that diagonal measurement which has to be exactly 20 feet from corner to corner. Hope that makes sense. So since it's a shed, it's not going to be perfect. And also remember, I'm just doing a rough measurement for the base of the shed, and then I'll fine tune it as the uh, wooden structure goes together. Good morning, folks. So the order of the day today is I'm going to get dirt here and fill this floor area in because I've decided I want to have an earthen floor in this building. So the good thing is, is I know exactly where to get no end of dirt and it's on my property and free. So here it is, big old mound of dirt from my septic. And I was kind of wondering, what am I going to do with a big mound of dirt like this anyway? Now I know. 
So the distance between my septic dirt pile and where I want to put the dirt at my uh, shower shed is about 250 feet. So that's a long ways to be hauling every load with the uh, with with the gorilla cart by hand. So I thought, well, you know, it's going to be super crude. But I thought, why don't I hook up uh, a really crude towing system with my Toyota pickup, aka Corolla. So the trunk release mechanism looks really sturdy and I think it should be able to handle all the pull from just a little gorilla cart with some dirt in it. Now that's just going to shut on the copper uh, wire and hopefully everything will be okay. So now I can just take the copper wire off the gorilla cart handle like this. Now we're ready to go get some dirt. I never made the homemade hook with the copper wiring um, sturdy enough around the handle here. So hopefully this will work now. That was great. So much time and effort saved. And now my big old uh, gorilla cart full of dirt is right on site, ready to unload. Now time to put the old senior physique into gear and start unloading the dirt. I'll just take the top layer off of the load to make the cart lighter, then I can flip it. Flip it. Flip it good. Flip it real good now. Flip it. So I'm uh, going to uh, leave about six inches of dirt there that I think should be uh, good to make a earthen floor. And there's probably people that are watching that have made earthen floors themselves. So you might have some comments. Please leave them below and I'll check them out. Time to get more dirt.
going to try to get all this done before sunsets, but I don't know. It's going to be a real race against the, uh, the darkness in order to get this completed. Well, it's so dark you folks might not even be able to see me, but I'm down to the very last cart and I can't believe it. Got it all done before dark. Well, how cool is this, folks? Um, last night I got all of the dirt completed for the base foundation of this 12 by 16 building. And so that's a lot of major work done and I couldn't be happier. And what's really cool today is I'm collecting rainwater because it's one of those rare days in January where it actually rains. So that means my tank will get some water. So it's a win-win situation. So as always folks, thanks so much for being here and watching these videos. I hope you found this interesting in some way. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, uh, click the little notification bell that'll let you know when my next video is coming up and I'll be doing a lot more videos as this shower shed progresses. Thanks again. See you on the next video.